Hey there, I'm Kevin Skinner. I'm the student pastor here at First Baptist Watauga. I would invite for you to join our student ministry every Wednesday night in person at 6 p.m. for some games and for our midweek student ministry worship service. Our student ministry has a simple vision. Understanding that Jesus is the difference in our lives, we want to live the difference, share the difference, and make a difference. And I would invite you to join us in that vision. Now stick around, and I hope that you're encouraged by this recent midweek message. Mafia, when we all close our eyes, kind of picks a person to, to get killed, right? And, and we do that over and over again, and then you vote people out because you think it's him. So Jonathan did like a flawless game, right, and didn't really ever get out. Well, the next round, I was not the Mafia, and I was sitting next to Jonathan. I thought, okay, he was the Mafia last turn, so he's not the Mafia this turn, and, and, and because it's just statistically not likely, right? Well... So we start this game, and I'm trying to figure out who it is. I'm kind of working together with Jonathan, trying to figure out who it is. And, and the thing I kept telling Jonathan, and really the whole group, I kept telling the whole group, guys, it's one of the Kimberleys, right? Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I didn't. I, well, yeah, I was, we were helping vote you off for, for certain, because I thought it was one of you. I was certain it was one of the Kimberleys, because, I mean, let's, let's be honest, they, they make up a huge chunk of the youth group, right? So, like, so, like, I've got a good chance at being right here. That that one of the and plus, it was one of the Kimberleys that kept getting killed each turn. So I thought, okay, there's some sibling rivalry going on, and one of the Kimberleys is it. And I kept saying, I kept shouting out, guys, it's st- statistically likely that it's one of them. And so we voted them all off, or or they were killed off. And and by that point, we're pretty much near the end of the game, and there's just a couple people left. And there was this moment where we had really one chance. And, and I thought, okay, it's, it's, it's got to be this person. Well, it wasn't that person. And, and the narrator, I think it was Kevin, he says, all right, go to sleep. And I thought to myself, that wasn't her? And I looked at Jonathan right before I closed my eyes, and Jonathan went. <laughs> and I thought, oh, no. <laughs> and sure enough, I was killed off that turn, and Jonathan won the game. And I thought, how is it possible? Because he was it last turn. It didn't make sense for him to be the villain again, right? And so, but, but that's the way it goes. That is mafia, right? Because sometimes you just don't know who the villain is until the very end of the game, right? And, and that's, that's part of what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about two kinds of people tonight. It's just kind of how, how the sermon, the passage laid itself out. And, and, and we're really not going to know who is who until the end, right? Till the end of the passage, until we understand. And that's, and so that's, that's what I was reminded of. And, and speaking of stories, I want to remind you we're in our new series, Story Time, right? So we're walking through multiple, several parables of Jesus, right? And so last week we started out this series, Kevin was in Matthew chapter 13, right? And so he tells a parable there and then he, he, he explains it and then there's tons of other parables, right? And this parable that we're in tonight, we're going to be in verse 24, In Matthew 13, it's like immediately after that other one, all right? I mean, Jesus is like rapid-fire story time, right? Just rapid-fire parables, right? And then explaining them, usually because the disciples are like, okay, we don't get it. What what does that one mean? Okay, now what did that one mean, right? And so this is kind of the process here. So let's go ahead and look at that passage. And so I'm going to read you the the parable itself, right? And then we're going to skip ahead a few verses to when the disciples ask for him to explain it. So let me me read that for you, starting in verse 24, and it'll be up on the screen. It says, He presented another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while people were sleeping, his enemy came, sowed weeds among the wheat, and left. And when the plants sprouted and produced grain, then the weeds also appeared. And the landowner's servants came to him, and they said, Master, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Then where did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he told them. Well, do you want us to go and pull them up? The servants asked him. No, he said, when you pull up the weeds, you might also uproot the wheat with them. So let both grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I'll tell the reapers, gather the weeds first... And tie them in bundles to burn them, but collect the wheat in my barn. So this is later in verse 36. He says, Then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples approached him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. And he replied, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. 
And the good seed, these are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil. Now the harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. Therefore, just as the weeds are gathered and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. And the Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather from his kingdom all who cause sin and those guilty of lawlessness. They will throw them into the blazing furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in their Father's kingdom. Let anyone who has ears listen. <laughs> That's, uh, that gets uh, pretty fiery at the end there. Uh, but, but we see this parable about a sower in his field, right, as, as per Jesus. He loves to use these agriculture, agriculture uh, parables, right? And so he's talking about these good seeds and, and then these bad weeds, right? And so we, you kind of see how he lays it up there. Good people, bad people, right? Two kinds of people. Now, fortunately, I don't have to explain the parable to you because Jesus did that for us, right? <laughs> he teaches the parable, and then he explains it to his disciples, right? It's always a good thing to do, like the disciples did. If you don't understand something, ask, right? There's just a common sense tidbit for you right there, pro tip. Disciples just ask questions. Ask questions sometimes. But anyway, so, so we see this parable, and, and, and although I don't have to explain it for you, I do want to point some things out for us so that we understand rightly why this matters to us, okay? Right? Why, why does this matter to us 2,000 years later, right? And so we're, we're going to see how this divides up into two kinds of people. So first of all, right? Weeds and wheat. Those are our two kinds of people, right? And, and so look again at verse 38 for me. It should be up here. The good seed, these are the children of the kingdom, right? The weeds are the children of the evil one. See what I'm saying now? Two types of people. It's pretty, pretty cut and dry, right? Children of the kingdom, weeds of the evil one, right? That's a, that's a very mean insult if you ever want to just really nab at your sibling. You're a weed of the evil one, Right? Don't ever say that to Brittany Jonathan. <laughs> but, but, but as we see here, in both cases, if you'll notice, the wheat and the weeds, both terms are for types of people, and both of them are really as a way of identifying somebody, right? So I get you to think about that because what we're talking about here is identity, right? And, and identity is an important thing. And one of the unique things about identity is it almost always has to do with belonging to something or someone, Right? It just almost always has to do with belonging to something in some way. It's just one of the key aspects of identity. So let me explain. <clears throat> when I was in intermediate school, it was about sixth grade, right? I was in GT. Does anyone know what that is? They still do that? Yeah, GT. So GT is called Gifted and Talented, right? Yeah, this is, this is a humble brag right here. I got to actually, so the sad part is I barely got into this program, right? Is anyone else like, like, barely considered one of the smart guys, because that was me. I barely made it. Thanks, Logan. I appreciate it. Right, yeah. They, well, they made me test, like, several big tests in third grade in order to place me in it in fourth grade. They were like, mm, okay, I guess you'll, we'll, we'll add you in. So they add me into this class, right? And so I'm, and I'm surrounded by tons of smart people. Like, this is where all the smart people go. To give you an idea, I, I became good friends with three or four of these guys. Now, one of those guys ended up going to a different high school. The other two went to the same high school as me, and they were like number two and number three in the class, right? I was not, <laughs> right? The top ten still on the stage. I was nowhere near that stage, guys. So, but, but those were my friends for that class, right? Now, somebody comes along someday, and, and I'm, I'm chit-chatting with, with some person, and they, they go, hey, you're smart, right? And I went, Define smart, you know, like how smart are we talking? Because I don't know what your problem is, but I'm probably not going to be able to help. Because I'm used to these GT problems where they're like, program this Lego robot. And I'm like, what? Who does that? I don't know how to do that, right? But, but they thought, you're smart, right? And I went, no. Went, yeah, yeah, you're smart. You hang out with uh, those guys over there. And I went, and so I, I saw what had happened was they thought, oh, you hang out with the smart guys, i.e., you're smart too. And I went, oh. But, of course, I was just clever. There's a difference. It's clever to always be partnered up with these smart people in class. Do we understand that? Thanks, Brayden. <laughs> Brayden's like, I get you. Yes, that's right. I knew that much, right? But then I'd become good friends with these people. And because I'd become good friends with these people, I, I hung out with them during school, right? So, so this person just thought I was smart, what a great concept, right? Because, because I belonged to them, I was associated with them, right? And so I had kind of that identity 
mistaken though it may be, right? I had this identity that I was some really smart guy when really I just kind of barely made the cut for smart. Right? <laughs> That's just kind of how it worked. Well, that, that in the same way, when we look at this passage, we're going to see certain characteristics kind of help identify you in either the wheat or the weeds. And they'll show who you belong to. These things, when you show up in your life, I'm, I'm going I'm to help differentiate this for you. You're going to be able to tell, okay, wheat, weeds, right? So I'm really only going to point out two major differences tonight, right? We're going to keep it pretty simple. But the first difference is this. Wheat grows with purpose, while weeds, they cause sin, right? So the wheat of the kingdom are things that grow with purpose, but the weeds of the, of the devil, excuse me, cause other people to sin, right? Now, now remember, these are two types of people, right? So the children of the kingdom, they've got this purpose. They're struggling to grow, right? They're, they're, they're trying to, to grow. They, they, they were planted there on purpose, right? The landowner came out, and he's like, I'm going to put good seed here. It's good seed. He knows it's going to grow, right? That's what seed does. But the weeds, someone else planted them. He, he did not intend for that to happen. And so the weeds are, are these things that are choking out, right? Anyone ever seen a weed? You know, right, that's what weeds do, right? They just choke out the life of other plants. Like, that's just what they do. That's literally what they do. They just choke out the life of other plants. Well, sometimes people do that, right? And that's, that's what Jesus kind of points out here, right? It's the weeds are people who, like, cause other people to sin. People of lawlessness, lawlessness right? It's like a fancy way of saying the sinner. But he's, he's pointing out something specific here that cause others to sin. He, he specifically said that word cause, Right? Cause others to sin. So weeds are the kind of people that cause other people to sin. Now, what causes other people to sin? Any guess? More sin, right? Exactly, more sin. Fun fact about sin. It never hurts just you. Never. Trust me on this. Never. It always hurts someone other than you. It always affects someone other than you. Let me, let me explain with another story about Jonathan. Because I'm just, I'm, I'm full of them, guys. I have all kinds of stories about Jonathan. He's, he's a great sermon illustration over the years. Now, this story, he, he was not this, uh, this victorious villain. In this one, he's actually the victim, right? Now, <laughs> now, he was probably much younger, seven or eight, right? So he's, he's just small Jonathan, right? Right, and so... Now, one of, the, one of the constant fights between me and my sisters growing up was over leftovers. Anyone fight about leftovers, right? Like, <laughs> thanks, Cole. I feel better now. Yeah, we, we, we fought over leftovers. We just, we just always did, right? Like, Dad would get so much pizza, and we would eat it. And then the next day, he's like, you guys have leftovers. You have lunch. I don't have to feed you, right? Well, logic, right? Well, except that we'd fight over that food. So it was like a summer day in the middle of the week. Dad's at work. And has anyone ever made their mom, like, really angry, like, like very, very top notch. Like, she, you know, like she's saying stuff like, I brought you into this world and so help me, I will take you out today. You know, that kind of stuff. Like we made mom that mad that day, right? We, we did it occasionally where, where she would get that mad. And all we're doing is, is fighting over who gets what leftovers, right? Like I want so many slices of pizza, but Brittany wants so many slices. Well, Bethany wants so many slices. Well, we've got it all spread out on our plates. No, I want this. No, you, no, you can't have that. I want that. Right? All of us are doing that, and Mom gets so mad at us, guys. So she just lost her patience. I mean, she's she's a pretty patient woman, but we we ran it down. We ran it down good, right? And so so she takes this empty pizza box and just in her frustration, she's like ah, and throws it behind her at the wall. Now, unfortunately, it never hit the wall. <laughs> because Jonathan had walked up unknowingly behind her, and he was just standing there watching. It, boom! <laughs> just pizza box. Pizza box right to the face. And mom goes, oh, no, I'm so sorry, Jonathan. I'm so sorry. And so she, and of course, he's fine, right? I mean, he's seven or eight years old. What was that for? You know, I didn't do it. Yeah, but, but he got hit with a pizza box, right? And I couldn't help but think, oh, no, that was our fault, right? Like, we had started this fight, and so we had angered mom, and yet Jonathan took the wrath from mom. So thanks for that, buddy. But do you see what I mean? Like, Jonathan took the punishment here, right? It was, it was our mistake. It was our wrongdoing, right? Because we shouldn't be fighting about leftovers. That's a very silly, dumb thing to fight about, right? Thankfully, I know that now that I'm older, right? You, you don't fight about dumb stuff like that. But when you do, when you, when you sin, and any sin does this, any sin will hurt someone nearby, anyone, right? 
many of you may be thinking over the various different sins, trying to find a rule, a way out, right? Like maybe that thing that you look at on your phone that you don't tell anyone about, that doesn't hurt anyone. It's just me. Your spouse will tell you otherwise here in several years, right? There's other things that do that too, right? You, you, you may tell lies. It's not, not, they won't find out. It's not going to hurt me. But your trust has now decreased, right? There's various things, all kinds of sin. All sin does this. Don't ever, ever think that your sin doesn't affect someone else. I promise you it does, right? If nothing else, your sin is part of what sent Jesus to the cross, right? So sin's a serious thing, and sin hurts other people. And so when we talk about this weeds, right, we talk about people who cause other people to sin. That's a big deal to cause other people to sin, right? Your sin is hurting other people. That's, that's the kind of stuff that weeds do. But wheat over here, they're trying to grow. They're growing with purpose. And so when they see their mistakes, when they see their sins, they give them up. They repent from them because they've got a purpose here on this earth. And they're trying to grow towards that purpose. So they're going to leave behind those things. They're going to say, okay, this is a problem and I need to deal with it. Right? I need to talk to somebody so that I can properly deal with this. See the difference there? See the difference? Difference number two. The wheat of the kingdom focuses on eternity, but the weeds of the devil focus on selfish competition. Wheat focuses on eternity. Weeds focus on competition. You see the landowner, right? He decides to leave the weeds and the wheat together. Why would you do that? It's an unusual farming practice back then, by the way. Unusual, right? It's unconventional wisdom to just let the weeds grow because they're choking out the life of the plant, right? Anyone feel like they've got some weeds in their life that you're like, God, would you please get rid of this, right? Maybe some people, you're just like, weed in my life. Get rid of it, please. It'd be so much easier, God, to grow if you would just get rid of these weeds in my life. But, but he leaves them. Why? Why does he leave these weeds, right? He lets them grow together, right? So the landowner here, he understands this, right? That I put those seeds there, and I know they're good seeds. I know that these seeds are going to grow, right? Now, the seeds could, could begin to grow, right? The wheat could let itself be choked out, right, if it focuses on the weed. But, but wheat is focused on eternity, right? If you look at the, that, that last verse, we see that the righteous will shine in heaven, right? It'll shine like the sun once they're separated, right? So the wheat have purpose. The wheat's end goal is to be gathered up. Right? The wheat, you have to remember this. As children of the kingdom, as, as, as people and heirs right, with Jesus, you have a purpose. That's so important to remember. You have a purpose, and there's a reason for you being on this earth. There's a reason for you growing. Right? There's a reason for you continuing to live and continuing to get past the weeds, right? to not let the weeds choke you out, whatever those weeds are. right? But the, the weeds focus on selfish competition. And again, that's just the nature of what a weed is. Let me read you the definition. I just, I just Googled the word weed to see what definition would pop up. Number one definition, here it is. It says this. A weed is a wild plant growing where it is not wanted and in competition with cultivated plants. Now, cultivated plants are just plants that are there on purpose, right? <laughs> I planted a plant, so it's a cultivated plant. Now, now a weed is just like, well, I want to grow, right? So I'm going to use whatever I need, right? So a weed is just focused on itself. It's its, oh, it's its nature, right? It makes sense, right? Now, of course, if you don't belong to the people of God, if you don't believe you're growing with a purpose, then your purpose is really just to worship number one, right? Matthew will tell you that, all about worship. When I talk about worship is, right, you're either going to worship God or you're going to worship you. Those are your options. <laughs> Matthew's like, amen, amen. <laughs> but that, that's how it goes, right? Weeds are focused on this selfish competition. Everything a weed does to survive is sucking the life out of another thing. It's sucking the life out of another plant. That's what we see here when we talk about weeds and we talk about wheat. So the weeds are thriving off the sucking the life out of another, out of another plant, right? In fact, Again, the usual farming practice is to go in and just pluck these, these weeds out, right? Because I don't want them to suck the life out of the wheat, right? But this is an unusual story. You remember, it's a parable, right? Fun fact about parables. We're just going to learn this, right? That Jesus tells these parables for a purpose. Does that surprise anybody? 
Hopefully not, right? He's telling these stories that have been just like I, I or Kevin or anyone that preaches up here. We often share these stories, like how I tell you about Jonathan being this awful mafia villain, or I tell you about Jonathan getting hit in the face with a pizza box, right? Parables are these stories that I'm trying to get you to see an illustration, I'm trying to get you to see something real and genuine. So when you see something like the the weeds not being pulled up right away, for these people back then, that's like what? What? Why would you not pull those weeds up, man? And it's because the farmer, right, he says that. He says, I, I don't want you to risk pulling up any of the wheat. Now, that is, that is a hard, difficult, confusing thing to wrap our heads around. Why, why would that be the case, right? And that's some of the mystery that we wrestle with and, and that tension that's there. But, but ultimately, right, you are so valued as wheat of the kingdom that God won't risk that, right? He won't risk pulling up. A wheat. He's not willing to risk it. Not willing, right? So, so obviously what we're seeing here is that the wheat has incredible value, right? It, it's growing. And, it, and, if, and if the wheat will simply focus on eternity, the final purpose for which it's been planted, right? And remember, we're talking about people here. Don't let me get drawn away in this analogy too much, right? If you're, if you're people of the kingdom, your focus should be on eternity. We lose that so much in the culture, right? Because in this very hostile world, in this world that's getting more and more hostile to Christianity, that's going to be so important to remember that this world is not the end of it, right? Middle school will end one day. <laughs> you don't stay there forever, right? High school will end one day. Whatever pain or suffering, annoyances, whether it be middle school or high school or after you grow up and find out all the other fun, awful stuff that's out there in life, right? Right? All of it will end because as believers of the kingdom, if we've, if we've accepted a relationship with Christ, then what we know, what we understand is that my eternity is what's most important, not what's right here. A, a weed may be choking me out today, but tomorrow I'll be gathered up and I'll be in heaven, right? And so that, that's, why, that's why there's a difference here between wheat and weeds. Weeds, weeds are focused on right now selfish competition, trying to suck the life out of other people so that we can get ahead. Wheat are focused on eternity. So, so today, now that I've talked about those differences, that the kinds of people we're talking about here, right? That's what this parable shows. We see the wheat. We see the weeds. We know now how to differentiate between the two, right? I've made that clear. And then you saw, right? Like, I, I read it for you, what happens to the weeds, Right? You saw that. We let them grow until the end. And then what happens to the weeds? Anyone remember? They get thrown into the fire. The fire has weeping and gnashing of teeth. Anyone else see that? Like, that's a bad place, right? Fire, right? I can't be more, more urgent about that, students. Right? Because, again, if we're focused on eternity and we understand that eternity is a real thing, if we have that belief, then we have to understand that belief, too, that this fire is real and that we don't want to be a weed. We want to be wheat. We want to be children of the kingdom. Who doesn't want to grow with a purpose to understand that their identity is in the kingdom and the Father, to understand that we can grow with the Lord, right, and that whatever problems we have here will be nothing in comparison with eternity? Who wants to be weeds and selfish competition, stressful competition, trying to constantly... Keep other people away from us so that we can grow better, that we can grow, right? But we have to tear these other people down, otherwise they're going to compete with me. That's what I, it's often what our, how our identities work these days, right? I can't be me unless you accept me as me, so I've got to be, but you're trying to craft your own identity. You don't have to, right? If you accept Christ, you're good seed planted for a purpose. God decides your identity. You're good seed. That's it. That's your identity. We make things so complicated today, guys. So complicated, too complicated. And so tonight, you know, as we get ready here in just a minute to, to do this invitation again, right? I'm going to go and invite Matthew up. And as we're, we're going to allow this invitation like we do week after week, right? I've made clear to you the difference between wheat and weeds, right? And I've made clear to you, Jesus made clear in this passage, what happens to wheat and weeds, right? Wheat get to go and get gathered up, Right? Children of the kingdom get to go live in the kingdom, the eternal kingdom. But weeds are gathered up and thrown away into the fire, right? Because they, they're not. 
that good seed that was planted. And so, so which one are you tonight, students? You, you need to get that clear. I, I, I urge you, we, we give you these invitations every week just so that we know that you have the chance to make absolutely sure which one you are. Because we, we don't want any of these students here to be gathered up and thrown into the fire when it's all said and done, right? And, and so until the day we die, right, we're going to be preaching this at you and giving you every opportunity you can so that you can get that squared away. So if you have made a decision to follow Christ, take heart. Your good seed, whatever weeds are out there, aren't going to choke you to death. Because the Lord will take care of you. You have an eternity that is far more valuable and that is protected. No weed can get to that, right? But if you don't know Christ, I, I encourage you, you need to make that decision, right? And, and those are the two kinds of people we find tonight, right? If, you, if you're a weed, right? If you know Christ, then good. Keep going, right? I know there's weeds in your life and I know it hurts and, it, and, and it's, it's a hard struggle to grow alongside these things. And sometimes you get out of one problem and you're like, praise God, that's over. And you're right back into another, right? And that's, that's our life, right? We're constantly struggling through the weeds, but we're growing with purpose. And tonight I want to offer you a chance to come back there and just pray with us. Come tell us what you're struggling with, right? Because we know that, that your eternity is more valuable, it's more important, and that, that you're you're going to make it if you can just look to Jesus. And we want to help you do that. We want to help carry those burdens for you. We want to know how we can help. So tell us about it. Tell us what your struggles are so we can pray for you. We can care for you. But if you don't know Jesus tonight, students, you need to. You have to make that decision, right? It's an urgent decision because I don't know when the harvest is. And that's why I'm so urgent about it. The harvest could be tomorrow. And I'm dead serious. I know that's hard to believe because like I've said before, you've always had it tomorrow, but that's not guaranteed. It's not promised. The harvest could be tomorrow, right? And everyone will be gathered up. So if you don't know Jesus, I beg you to come talk to us about it. If you don't understand the gospel, I beg you to come talk to us about it. All right? Come talk to us. We're, we're going to give you that chance like every other night. Pray with me, students. I hope that you were encouraged by this message today, and I'd love to hear from you. If you'd like more information about our student ministry, if you need prayer, or if you'd like to make a decision to make Jesus the Lord of your life, head on over to fbcwatagaorg slash students, scroll down towards the bottom of that page, and you'll see a place that you can send me a message directly. My desire is that you would experience the difference that Jesus makes in your life this week.